Today, we're building your very own AI tutor, one that actually talks to you, looks at you, and teaches you AI and machine learning from scratch. We're combining three powerful tools, Pipecat for real-time conversation, HeyGen for a realistic talking avatar, and the brand new GPT-5 as the tutor's brain. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have an AI teacher that you can chat with right in your browser, ready to guide beginners through AI and ML concepts step-by-step. Step. Let's jump in. Hello, I'm excited to help you learn about AI and machine learning. What's your name? My name is Jim. Nice to meet you, Jim. Are you new to AI and machine learning? Do you have some experience or are you just looking for a refresher? Uh, I'm new to it. Everyone starts somewhere. Would you like to begin with one of these topics? Features, VSS, labels, train slash test split, or overfitting? Please pick one. Yeah, let's go with uh, features versus labels. That sounds interesting. What is that? Great choice. In machine learning, features are like the ingredients in a recipe things you use to make a prediction. Labels are like the final dish, the answer you want to get. For example, if you want a computer to predict if a fruit is an apple or an orange, the features might be color, weight, and shape. The question two, what do we call the part of data used to teach a machine learning model? A test set, B training set, C recipe, please choose A, B. The training, I think it's called the training set, right? Correct. The training set is used to teach the model. Let's walk through how our AI tutor works step-by-step. First, you talk into your computer's mic. Your browser sends that to our server using a safe, real-time connection called WebRTC. After that, our next stop is DeepGram. Think of DeepGram like a super accurate note taker. It listens and turns your speech into text. Next, we hand that text to OpenAI's GPT-5. This is the brain. It reads what you said and decides on the next step, always one step at a time. And in simple English. If you say start quiz, the brain switches to a short five question check to see what you've learned. Once we have the reply, we send it to Cartesia, which turns the text back into a clear, natural voice, like a friendly teacher speaking. Finally, HeyGen gives that voice a face, an on-screen avatar that talks to you in real time. All of this is connected by Pipecat, which keeps the pieces running quickly and smoothly. So the loop is, you speak, DeepGram writes it down, GPT-5 answers simply, Cartesia speaks it back, and HeyGen shows the tutor's face. Then we repeat, just one easy step at a time. Let's get into the code. The first thing we need to do is set up our Pipecat voice agent. So go to the GitHub repository that I linked in the description for this Pipecat quick start and go over to this green button right here and copy this HTTPS link right here. Once you have this link copied, head back over to your code editor so we can clone this locally. Now that I'm in my code editor, I'm going to click on open project and new folder. And I'm going to call this Pipecat agent and click create. Let's open that. First things first, we're going to clone that repository that we just visited with the link we just copied. So open up a terminal and run the command to git clone and paste in that URL and click enter. Now our repository has been cloned, meaning we have a copy of it locally. So let's CD into it. Next, we're going to have to install all of our required dependencies. So let's do that first by creating a Python virtual environment. On Mac, you can do this by running Python 3-M, V-E-N-V, V-E-N-V, and that'll initialize a virtual environment for us. And to activate that virtual environment, you can run the command source, V-E-N-V, slash bin, slash activate. Now we're ready to start installing our dependencies. So as you can see here, there is a requirements.txt file with all the plugin dependencies that we need. So in order to install all of these, we're just going to have to run pip install dash r requirements.txt and let those install. Now that that's done, we need to set up our environment file to store our API keys. As you can see here, they already provided us an example environment file. So what we're just going to do is copy that into a new .env file. So run the command copy env.example.env. Now you can see this .env file has been created for us. If you don't know, your environment file is just a file where you can store your environment variables. In this scenario, this is where we're going to be storing our API keys. So right now, to set up the voice agent, we need our DeepGram API key, which is going to take what we're saying and convert that speech into text for our LLM to understand. And that LLM we're going to be using is OpenAI. Now we do need an OpenAI API key. And also we need a Cartesia API key. Now Cartesia is going to be the voice of our AI avatar. So it's going to take this response that our LLM is generating and put a voice on it so that we can hear what our avatar is saying. Now to get each of these API keys, I included links in the description with basic instructions so that you can get your API key. It's super simple to do. 
Also, we want to change our LLM model to GBT5. So in your .env file, write open AI underscore model equals GPT hyphen five and save that. Then head over to your bot.py file and where we declare our LLM right here at about line 81, include this line as well to specify that we want to use the GPT-5 model. Now it's time to run our voice agent. We've got everything set up. A really quick, I'm going to explain how this bot.py file actually works. So you're not just running it blindly. At the very top, we're loading our .env file, setting up logging and loading a voice activity detection model. This helps the bot figure out when you're actually speaking so it doesn't transcribe silence. And then we're also importing our podcast components. So, so that's our text-to-speech model with Cartesia, our DeepGram speech-to-text model, and then our LLM, which is OpenAI. And we are also importing this web RTC transport that handles audio in and out. And if you scroll down to this run bot function, this function is the heart of the whole file. So we're initializing these services with our API keys, speech-to-text, text-to-speech, and our LLM. And we're setting the voice for our assistant. Down here with this message and message context, we're giving the AI some starting instructions like be friendly and conversational, and we're setting up a message history to maintain context in the conversation. This RTVI is just real-time voice input, and it's the processor that helps the AI figure out when to respond. So without it, you know, the bot wouldn't know when we're done talking. If you scroll down a little more, this is important. Our pipeline, this is just the flow of data. What happens is we speak, then that's going to get detected by the voice activity detection model or the RTVI. That speech is going to get transcribed to DeepGram which is then sent to OpenAI for a response. The reply is then voiced by Cartesia and then sent back to our browser. And all of this is happening in real time. But if you scroll down a bit, this pipeline task wraps the pipeline and starts it up when someone connects. It also cleans things up when they disconnect. Scrolling down further, we have these two event handlers right here, on client connected and on client disconnected. These functions handle people joining and leaving. So when someone joins, it tells the bot to say hello and start the conversation. Now, if I scroll a little further, we have the bot function. This sets up the actual web RTC transport. So audio in, audio out, and the voice detection analyzer. And then finally, at the bottom, we have this main entry point to kick off the whole thing with this main function. So now that we understand what this file is doing under the hood, let's go ahead and run the bot. One more thing we need to change before we run this code is this line right here. So instead of runner arguments handle signal interruption, just go ahead and put false and then save that. Now let's go to the terminal so we can test speaking with our agent. To get our voice agent up and running in our local host, run the command python bot.py. On this first try, it'll take around 30 to 40 seconds, but after that, it'll load really quickly. Now our voice agent is running, and we see here we can speak with it at localhost 7860. So we can just click this link to speak with the agent in our browser. Localhost 7860, let's click connect and wait for our voice agent to show up. Hello. I'm your AI assistant, here to help with any questions or tasks you have. How can I assist you today? Hey, can you tell me a fun fact about San Francisco? Hey, absolutely. I'd love to share a fun fact. Did you know that San Francisco is home to the only moving national historic landmark in the US? It's the city's famous cable car system. These cable cars have been rattling up and down the hills since the late 1800s and are still a unique way to explore the city. Have you ever ridden on one? No, but can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Of course. I'm an AI created to assist and make life easier. Kind of like a helpful friend who's always here. I can answer questions, help you find information, brainstorm ideas, or even just chat if you want some company. While I don't have personal experiences of my own, I've learned a lot from books, articles, and conversations. So I'll always do my best to provide useful and friendly answers. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. If you All right, we've got our PipeCap voice agent up and running. It could listen, think, and talk back just like a real tutor. But right now, it's basically just a voice in the void. We need a face, and that's where HeyGen comes in. HeyGen lets us turn our AI responses into a real-time talking avatar. So our tutor doesn't just speak, it comes to life on screen. Let's hook that up next. All right, so we see our voice agent is showing up in localhost, and we can successfully hold a conversation with it. The next part of the setup includes setting up the HeyGen AI avatar. So in your browser, just go to HeyGen.com and create an account. And once you create an account, log in. The good thing about HeyGen is once you first create an account, you have some API credits to use, so you don't have to worry about paying just yet. HeyGen also has really smooth avatars. What we need to do right now is grab our API key. So go to this bottom left and click on your personal account and then go to settings. And once you're in settings, go to subscriptions and API. 
And instead of HeyJet app, click on HeyJet API and copy your API token. Once you've copied your HeyJet API key, head back to your code editor. Now let's head over to our .env file and let's type in agent underscore API underscore key and paste in that API key that we just copied and save our file. Let's head back to our browser. And the setup for this agent avatar and Pipecat are all in the Pipecat docs. So go to docs.pipecat.ai. Then in the search bar right here, you're just going to want to search agent. And this first option right here is what we want. We can just go through these docs step by step. So it says the first step is to install the required dependency. So let's copy this and head back over to our code. Let's run this command and install the HeyGen dependency in our virtual environment. Back in the docs, let's take a look at what the next step is. So we need to include our HeyGen API key, which you already did. So we can scroll down further. And you can see here, we need to make a couple of imports. We already have our OS and our pipeline imported. But these three right here, we do have to add to our bot.py file. So copy these and head back over to your code. Now head to the top of the file, right under where we made our most recent imports and, and paste in these from the docs. This is just a Python library to help with concurrency. And then these two are what we need to import Agen's video streaming services. Let's head back to the docs to see what's next. Next, we need to wrap our initializations for our Agen avatar, our pipeline, and our transport parameters inside this asynchronous client session function. So copy the asynchronous function as well as the HeyGen initialization and head back to your code. Back in our code, scroll down to about line 86. And that's where we're going to paste in what we just copied like so. And what we need to do is indent all of this so that it fits inside of our asynchronous function. We can do that by just clicking tab. This asynchronous client session wrapper is needed because the Hagen video service requires an HTTP client session to make API calls to Hagen servers. So let's just make sure the session is properly created and cleaned up. Then HTTP connections are reused for efficiency. Now we need to make sure Hagen is in our pipeline after text to speech. And we also have to add a few things to our transport parameters in our bot function so that video is enabled. We need video out enabled is equal to true. Video is live is true and the width and height of our video. Once you include that, make sure to save your file. All right, and now it's time to test that our avatar is fully set up. So let's run this file again by running python bot.py and heading back to localhost 7860. So back in localhost, when we click connect, we should be able to speak with our voice agent and see our AI avatar that we set up link syncing to what is being said. So let's click connect and check that right now. Hello, I'm your AI assistant here to help with questions, share information, or just have a conversation. How can I assist you today? Yeah, can you just tell me a fun fact about San Francisco? Absolutely. Here's a fun fact. San Francisco is home to the only moving National Historic Landmark in the United States. The city's iconic cable cars. They're not just a tourist attraction. They're part of the city's public transit system and have been rolling through the streets since the late 19th century. Got it. And can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Of course. I'm an AI assistant designed to help you with all sorts of questions. Whether you're curious about history, need help with a problem, or just want to chat. I don't have personal experiences, but I've been trained on lots of information. So I try to offer helpful, friendly, and accurate answers. Thank you. And there we have it. Our AI avatar agent is showing up, lip syncing and speaking with us in real time. And we could see it move as well. One thing I wanted to change is that the voice in the avatar definitely did not match. So let's go to HeyGen and pick a different avatar to suit the voice. To switch out the avatar, go back to HeyGen.com. And what we're going to do is click on interactive avatar down here, real time conversational AI. And they'll provide a list of interactive avatars. If we click on public avatars right here, these are the avatars that they have listed for general public use. I'm going to choose June HR, but feel free to choose whichever avatar you'd like. So I'm going to copy this ID and then head back to my code. Back in my code, I'm going to scroll down to our client session function where we initialize the avatar. And right here where I have Sean therapist public, I'm just going to paste in that ID for June HR public. Now I'm going to save this and then run the file again with Python bot.py. And let's go ahead and confirm that the avatar has changed in localhost. Let's speak with June from HR. Hello, I'm your AI assistant, here to help you with any questions or tasks you might have. If there's something you need, 
just ask. Got it. And can you help me with some human resources? Absolutely. I can help with all sorts of HR topics, like hiring tips, onboarding best practices, employee engagement ideas, policy guidance, and more. What specific HR support are you looking for? Awesome. So we see that the AI avatar is changed and better suits the voice that we got from Cartesia AI. All right. And what I have done to change this to an AI tutor for beginners is in the messages where we set the instructions for the agent, I put, you are a friendly AI basics tutor for beginners. Speak in clear English with short sentences and concrete examples. And then I give it the basic flow. So there's one step per turn, ask one question and give one instruction per turn, then wait. And then I told it to use analogies to help explain things and keep turns under two sentences unless asked. I also included this quiz mode. So after the agent is done teaching, it can quiz us on the topics we just learned. So if we say start quiz, it's just going to give us a five question concept check on the AI ML fundamentals that we have been taught. And then when we answer, the agent is going to break down our response and need to say correct or almost. Well, one more thing I changed was down in the session greeting. I said, start by greeting the user by learning their name, ask about their background, and then offer one topic in AI or ML to start off with. You can get these changes directly from my GitHub repository that I linked in the description. You can just copy and paste what I have here. And then once you do that, we'll go back to the terminal and run Python bot.py. And let's speak with our AI tutor in localhost. Hello, I'm happy to help you learn about AI and machine learning. What's your name? Yeah, I'm Jim and I'm happy to be here. Welcome, Jim. Are you new to AI and machine learning? Do you have some experience? Or are you here for a quick refresher? Honestly, I'm a beginner and I'm just excited to learn. Great, Jim. Let's start simple. Would you like to learn about the difference between features and labels? How we split data into train slash test sets? Or what overfitting means? Please pick one to begin. Can you teach me about features and labels as simply as you can? Once again, I'm a beginner. Of course, Jim. Think of baking cookies. The recipe uses ingredients like flour, sugar, and eggs. In machine learning, features are like those ingredients. The pieces of information we use to make something. Labels are like the finished cookies. They are what we want to predict or know. For example, if we want a computer to guess if an email is spam, features. The words in the email, length, who sent it, etc. Label, spam or not spam the answer we care about. Does that make sense so far? Got it. And can you teach me what overfitting means? I uh, have never heard about that. Sure. Imagine you're studying for a test only by memorizing questions from last year's exam instead of understanding the subject. On the test, you might do well if you see the same questions, but if questions are different, you'll struggle. That's overfitting. When a machine learning model memorizes the training data too closely and can't handle new unseen data, it remembers the small details but doesn't learn the bigger pattern. Would you like an example in plain language? Oh, I see. So it's like overcompensating on a data set. And uh, yeah, I would like an example in plain language. Exactly, Jim. Here's a simple example. Let's say you want to teach your computer to tell apples from oranges. You show it photos of 10 apples and 10 oranges. If your model overfits, it might remember the exact spots and shapes of those apples and oranges, instead of learning general rules like apples are usually red and round. When you show it a new apple with a small bruise or a new shape, it might get confused and make mistakes because it only learned your training photos, not what an apple usually looks like. Does that help clarify overfitting? Would you like to try a short quiz to check your understanding so far? Let's do it. Awesome. Here's question one. Which of these describes a feature in machine learning? Are the answer the model tries to predict B extra decoration in a program C an input or piece of information used to make a prediction? What do you think? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say C an input or piece of information used to make a prediction. Correct. Features are the input information used for making predictions. One fifth. Here's question two. What is the label in machine learning? Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video or have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I have a new tutorial coming out pretty soon. So I'll see you in the next one.